I'm Rebecca and welcome to my channel. I was inspired to make this in-depth look at how different corsets affect my plus size figure after I watched a recent video by Nicole Rudolph titled 100 Years of Corset History, How Eight Corsets Affect the Same Body. It was a fascinating video and she went in depth on the construction and historical silhouette information for each corset. She also tried on each one and showed how her measurements were affected. But she has an athletic build and is short-waisted, so her body reacts entirely differently than my body. As a plus-size woman, I was curious to see how my corsets of various different eras cause my body to react and what measurements I wind up achieving with each era corset. Nicole focused on the 1790s through the 19-teens with her video, but I have decided to go a little bit further and look at the mid-1700s all the way through the 19-teens. In this video, we are going to look at corsets or stays from the following years. Mid-1700s fully boned stays, 1780s partially boned stays, 1820s corset, 1860s corset, 1870s corset, 1900s S-bend corset, and a 19-teens corset. Let's start with my measurements in modern undergarments. We are going to be looking at hip, waist, underbust, and bust. Let's start with the waist. My waist measurement is 39 and 3 quarters. My underbust I'm going to measure a little bit below my bra line, so I'm going to measure it about here because that is the largest part and that is 43 and a quarter. My bust is 48 and an eighth, and I am wearing a modern bra, by the way, but not a padded style. And hips are 52 and a quarter. So those are my starting point measurements. Also, if it helps to have this measurement, the distance between my bust point and my waist and my waist and my hip, I thought that that might be interesting. I am tall, I'm 5'10", and I'm proportionate top and bottom, so it's probably going to be longer than most people's. But from my natural waist to my hip is about seven, just over seven. And from my widest part of my bust to my waist is seven and three quarters, just shy of eight. So there's your starting point. Let's go ahead and start with the corsets. These are my fully boned mid 18th century stays. These are based on a pattern that I believe was J.P. Ryan, but it's really, I didn't use the pattern. I was a broke college student when I made these, and so I actually made these by looking at a picture of the diagram of the stays and blowing it up and changing it to my size, because that's a lot easier than paying for a pattern when you're a broke college student. They are made with both interior and exterior layers, as in two layers, of cotton canvas duck. They're terribly made, fully by machine other than the binding and other than some fixing, and the machine was having tension issues. So as you can see on the stomacher, it's pretty terrible, both front and back. But I powered through and made this, and a couple years later I finally bound the stays with bias tape. By that time the canvas of the stays was starting to fray apart, and so I actually had to do giant whip stitches to like hold the canvas together. So they're really, really terrible. They are fully boned with cable ties and they do give that really conical silhouette and they're quite sturdy, which is what happens when you have a ton of cable ties in something. I did actually do the eyelets by hand. And this is what the inside looks like. I did serge all of the seams. They're pretty big seam allowances. Now let's take a look at what these look like on.
as you can probably tell, these stays do not actually fit me anymore. These were made in 2008, so in the last 12 years my body has changed a little bit and they are too small in the bust. They do still fit me fine in the waist. Because, however, they're laced over a stomacher, there is a little bit of flexibility, but even with the stomacher, there's still a little gap here where this should overlap. So let's go ahead and take some measurements and see what they are in this pair of stays. So waist here is 39 and a half. So that is a quarter inch down from my original measurement. Under bust, it's conical, so it's kind of hard to find the exact under bust point, but I think it's around here. And that is 43 inches. And bust, which is quite high in these, is 47. So as I mentioned, these stays are a little bit small, but also the 18th century really compresses the bust. So it does make sense that it is smaller. And hips, which I'm measuring under the stays because they actually do stick out over my like lower belly. They're sticking out away from my body. So I'm measuring underneath them for hips. And that is... 54 and three quarters. So there's a significant increase in the hips. So as you can probably tell by the change in my measurements from my regular measurements to those in stays, everything is just a tiny bit compressed going down through the body here. And it's basically forcing my body to squish out the bottom. So that's why there's such a large increase on my hip measurement going up two and a half inches in my hips because everything's just kind of been pushed down. Now, one other note that I do want to add about these stays is again, these are super, super old and they were made very poorly. I didn't know what I was doing. This was literally like one of my first historical projects ever. And so I noticed as, as I put them on that they're actually tearing apart right here and hopefully nowhere else. But yeah, the binding is just like tearing off. And so I feel personally like I could lace my waist a lot smaller in these, but I'm a little too worried to, and I don't know that I would get any effect because I think as I would lace tighter right here, this might just rip open more. So I'm going to take these off now and probably not wear these again because I don't know that I care to fix these, but these are the fully boned mid 1700s style stays. Next up are the 1780s prow front stays, which you can really see just how prow front these are. These are made from a butterick pattern, and I also, I think, used a tutorial on the American Duchess blog at the time to learn more about how to do this curved part up here. These were made in 2013, and they are a home deck fabric on the outside, which you will be seeing a lot more of because I've used these on multiple corsets. And on the inside, they're actually the same canvas as the earlier 18th century stays. These do not have hand on eyelets. These are by machine because I did them before I boned the corset, so I was able to do them on my Viking. And I did add extra binding on the seam allowances because I really like the look of that. They lace up the back with spiral lacing, and these, again, are partially boned. You can see some of the boning pattern a little bit easier from the inside. Everything here was done on machine except for the binding. what is my least favorite pair of stays to wear. My 1780s stays that lace up the back with spiral lacing. Now I know that spiral lacing is historically accurate. I think it's the devil. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, now what do I do with this? I've had these stays for years and I still never know what exactly I should do with it. So I'm just going to wrap this around my waist a couple times for the sake of this video 
and tuck it in place. This took me way too long to lace up and they're also terribly uncomfortable. I know that this is supposed to be a prow fronted era and I think I made these wrong because I feel completely compressed. So my bust measurement I'm sure is going to be significantly smaller than it should be. But let's take some measurements. We'll start with the waist. My waist in this is 39 inches even. So it's the smallest so far, but only by half an inch. And it's only 0.75 inches smaller than my actual waist measurement. Next, the rib cage. Again, we have kind of a conical look here, but it is the more prow front. So I think my rib cage is actually a little compressed. Yeah, my rib cage is 41 and three quarters in this. So it is a little bit compressed. Next, we'll do the best. Again, my bust is feeling super, super compressed in this. So I think that my bust is going to be very small. Oh my God, no wonder it hurts. <laughs> my bust is like not where it should be. It's 43 and 5 eighths. So, ow, that's why I feel so, yeah. Because my bust is literally four and a half inches smaller than it normally is. So I guess it's good to be squishy, but I really can't wait to take this off. And my hips, which are like super, super ballooned, if you can see this. I mean, basically in every direction, but especially the front, I feel like maybe this is what pregnant people feel like. It just goes in and then it goes like, Ugh. My hips are 53 and a half. So actually um, they're smaller than in the last corset but it just feels like it's getting pushed down. So these are my 1780s poorly fitting prow front partially bone stays. These are bonus stays because these are ones that actually fit me better for the later part of the century. They are made by Designs From Time. And I won these on a Facebook giveaway. And I believe they're made out of linen. here. I was going to stick with just corsets that I have made for myself, but after the atrocity of my old 1780s stays, I wanted to share with you these newer stays that are in my collection. Now, I actually won these from a Facebook giveaway from the company Designs From Time, and I received them uh, right around the start of this year or the very end of last year, so I haven't gotten an occasion to actually wear them or anything because coronavirus but oh my God, these are so much more comfortable. Now, I don't think that these quite fit me properly either. I think they're actually a little too short-waisted for me because the tabs start here and my natural waist is more like here. So it's not quite on. And obviously like the lacing gap isn't quite even because it is completely closed down here. So it's probably a little bit too large over here and then it laces to a gap of about two and a half to three inches at the very top. But the comfort level of these is amazing. These are actually so comfortable, probably just as comfortable, if not more so, than my Victorian corsets. So I would say that maybe this is a little bit more like a very late 1780s, starting to go into the 1790s because of the higher waist, but it doesn't have that separate bust cup look that the 1790s days actually have. That said, I still wanted to go ahead and take my measurements in these where I am not feeling so compressed in the bust, where it fits me a lot better, a lot more comfortably than my own stays that I made for myself back in 2013. So starting with the waist, my waist in these is 39 and 3 eighths. So it's just a tiny, tiny bit compressed over my natural waist. Under bust 
is 42 and three quarters. So it's a little bit compressed from my natural under bust. And bust is 48 and three eighths. So it is just a tiny bit larger than my natural bust. Hence why this pair of stays is so comfortable compared to the other 1780 stays. I also don't feel like I'm being really squished down below, so I'm curious to see what these hip measurements are. This does, though, stick out again way past my stomach, and there's not even any, like, I can't do anything to lace it tighter because it is all the way tight. So I feel like I would want this to be down like this, which is why this feels a little bit more 1790s to me than 1780s. But hips are 52 and three quarters. So just the tiniest bit larger than my natural hip measurement. <sighs> and the best part is I can breathe. This is my Regency corset, or really probably more of an 1820s style, but it is made from a pattern in period costume for stage and screen, has the bust gussets here, with lots of cording and machine embroidery and stitching detail here. It is made out of two layers of cotton twill. And I did at one point have to actually take it in because it had stretched a little bit too large. It has some steel boning And it laces up the back, but with crisscross lacing instead of spiral because I prefer that. They have seen better days and have had to be patched in multiple places where the bones have actually poked through the layers. Let's take a look at them on me. Regency stays. When I made them, I thought that they were kind of your average run-of-the-mill long line Regency corset. But I have since learned that this really alludes to almost a slightly later style, even possibly as late as the 1830s. So I call these my 1820 stays, where you kind of have that transition from the Regency period to the Romantic era. And I think part of the reason that they are a little bit later for me is that whenever I have a support garment like this, it is naturally going to take in my waist because I am hourglass shaped. And also because of that, I have to have hip gussets or it will not fit me correctly. So this does have hip gussets here in the side. And then it has, of course, the bust cup look that the Regency is so well known for. This did originally have a wooden busk in it when I made it, but I actually wore this for a theater production a few years ago and determined that I could not safely dance while wearing a wooden busk and therefore actually traded it out for two metal lacing strips that I had had in my stash that were the right length. And the lacing strips are much sturdier steel than even your average steel for boning. And so I thought that they would do a really great job of emulating that busk, but still having the tiniest bit of flexibility and or at least just the ability to not snap if I, you know, did a high kick, which I did do in this corset. Because you know what? You can move in corsets. Let's go ahead and take my measurements. I don't expect that there will really be that much change in this corset from my natural measurements because there's not a lot of compressing going on or squishing or anything like that. They're really pretty, just comfortable, just snug. So waist, in fact, is I think my exact natural waist measurement, 39 and three quarters. Under bust is 41 and an eighth. So that is actually a little bit more snug than my natural waist bust is quite a high bust, but 
it actually, it you know what, it's smaller than my natural bust by quite a bit. It's 45 and 3 eighths, but it doesn't feel like it's being compressed at all. So I'm really quite surprised about that. And hip. Hip is 53 and 5 eighths. So that's actually larger than my natural hip as well. And it could be that this, because this actually goes to my hip, it is compressing a little bit more here and putting just a little bit of extra down and out. That said, there's really not much boning in here. I have two metal bones here, the bust or fake bust here in the front, some cording here, and then I have two metal bones kind of on the sides and a set of two bones here in the back. So it's not very heavily boned and it's quite comfortable. I told you you would see that fabric again. This is my 1860s corset based on a pattern from 1869, a pattern diagram in I think like a Danish catalog. I will try to link it down below if I can still find it. And it has bust gussets as well as a very large hip gusset, which really helps with hip spring. And not only does it have that same fabric, but it is also canvas on the inside with boning channels applied mostly separately so that they can follow the lines. There's also a hip gusset in the back metal grommets in this one and everything is machine done except for the binding and it's very comfortable. The boning channels are just made out of twill tape but I don't know that I would recommend that because I have had some try to poke through not on this corset I think but on the next corset you will see. And you can see how the busk has bent to my shape. Let's take a look at it on the body. place the Victorian era with its center front busk closure and the gorgeous curves that exist in this era this is a corset from the 1860s and this is potentially I think my favorite corset to wear I just love the shape of it I think it gives me such a wonderfully defined waistline I mean I basically have shelves here <laughs> to put my hands on because there is so much hip spring in this corset and that by the way is the secret to a lot of the Victorian era but especially the 1860s and also right around the turn of the century as you start to get into the S-Bend corset, but the secret is in the hip spring. You want hips on your corset that are larger than your hips. You want to be able to put your hands under here, which I can. There's a whole big gap on each side because remember your skirts are not touching your hips in any way in this era. You are wearing hoop skirts, so you just want the tiniest waistline that you can get and to make your waist look smaller, your hips look bigger. So that is the whole thing. You don't want any compression on your hips here at all. You want the compression on your waist so it looks nice and tidy. And then your bust is also pretty low in this era. So the bust just kind of sits into the corset. It really isn't getting actually that much support at all. And in fact, I think sometimes when I wear this corset, I stuff socks or other little pads into the corset because my bust just feels uncomfortable when it's low because it's so used to being supported in a bra and so like right now my bust just feels super super low and that's because of the shape of the corset but let's go ahead and take a look at the measurements that this corset gives me and see how they compare to my regular measurements we'll start with the waist waist in this corset 
is 37 and a quarter. So I am getting two and a half inches of compression and that's just being laced comfortably. I'm not tight lacing this at all. This is just what my body will do when it's compressed because I do have extra fluff to move around. Next, we'll look at the underbust. Underbust here is just a, almost exactly 40 inches. So it's quite compressed from my natural underbust. By the way, that is one of the things that I like so much about corsets because the part of myself, of my body that I dislike the most, I guess you could say, is actually my underbust. I have always had a really large rib cage and it's always been a fleshy rib cage as well. And I just, I'm self-conscious about it. So I, I do have like, a fairly smallish waist but then it just kind of balloons above it and that is why I always feel self-conscious about this part of my body right here. It just feels like it's out of proportion compared to my bust and my waist and so with a corset it just smooths everything down and I feel like everything is just much more flattering. Okay let's take a look at the bust. So bust here I can get the tape to stay up in place. Bust is 48 even, so almost exactly my normal bust. And that's probably because it's not really being supported. <laughs> and finally, the hip measurement. I expect to have a fair amount of spring here, but I don't know that it will be that extreme actually. Really curious. So it's 54 even. So it is a little bit larger than my natural hips, but really it's not a ton. You can see that this does also stick out over my belly here so that there's also a lot of room here. Again, you really want that hip spring. So this corset is really, it's cinching here, not again uncomfortably, but quite comfortably so it's cinching here and a little bit here, but otherwise it's pretty even with my body size here and then it's larger than my body size here. And that's what makes this era corset so comfortable too, in my opinion. Now a very similar looking corset to the last one. This is my 1870s corset, which is from De Gracius, however you pronounce that, and made out of, again, the same fabric and the same canvas liner as the last one. The last one, by the way, was made in 2016, towards the end of the year. This one was made in 2017, towards the beginning of the year. So I did them in fairly close succession. Similar methods were used on this one. And for example, the boning is all in those twill tape channels, or mostly. There are also bones on the seams in this one. Both of them are bound with silk, by the way. And this one I did start to do flossing, but then I never finished it. So this is the only flossing on this entire corset. Maybe someday I will go back to finishing this. There are gussets in the bust, but they're fairly short and also gussets in the hip, two gussets, which give a lot of nice shaping to this corset. You can really see how the belly curves when you look at the busk. to the corset that I probably wear more than any other corset. This is so comfortable to me and I don't know if it's just that I've worn it a lot or that it just kind of fits me right or what but this corset is so comfortable. For one thing it is the style that will then go into the natural form bustle era where you have a very rounded belly. Now, they don't make spoon busks long enough for ladies of my height. They are like 
this tall. So I just have a regular opening busk in here, but I was able to curve it just a little bit, even just by wearing it. And so it does give me that rounded belly curve that was so popular in this era. And then you do have the waist, but it's not nearly as tight of a waist as the previous 1860s corset. So this one, I don't know if it's just the shape of the corset or what, I think because it's a little bit longer through the body, you don't get that cinching that you do in the 1860s where the waist was actually just a skosh higher in the 60s than it is in the 70s and 80s where it's a lot longer and smoother in this era. This era also does, I find, give me a little bit more of the bust support that the 1860s lacked. So here the bust is a little bit higher. Um, I would say about as high as my natural bust is when I'm wearing my bra. So that's probably one of the other reasons that it feels so comfortable. Let's go ahead and take those measurements. So waist measurement in this is 39 even. One of the other fun things that I noticed about this corset is that I can see my waist when I look down like this. Normally I can't, and in a lot of those other styles I couldn't either. So that's kind of an interesting uh, revelation. Under bust is 41 and an eighth, and bust is 46 and a half, which I'm actually quite surprised about. I thought it would be a little bit closer to my natural bust measurement. And finally, hip. I expect this to be quite large because of the rounded belly. So this will be interesting to see what it actually sits at, because again, this kind of sits away from the body. It is 54 even, so that was the exact same measurement as in my 1860s corset. Next up is my newest corset, my turn of the century early Edwardian late Victorian corset, S bend as some might call it, and this is made out of silk dupioni on the exterior and cotton canvas on the interior with the twill tape for boning channels, kind of like my last two corsets. This one is a truly Victorian pattern, highly recommend that pattern, it went together very, very nicely, and it is very, very curvy, which I really like. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one on. This corset requires padding. the newest corset in my collection, a turn of the century corset from about 1902, maybe 03. And this is what is commonly referred to as an S-bend corset, though I have heard that that term is actually incorrect, and they should be called a flat-fronted corset. Of course, that said, on my body, there's kind of no such thing as a flat front because I do have a stomach. So S-Bend does seem to be the more accurate name for a corset like this for me. Now, I did do one thing wrong in making this corset, and that was that I forgot to take into account that you are supposed to have padding underneath the corset, not only in the bust, like I showed you, but also in the hips or rear. And that is what helps to create that S-Bend silhouette when you're wearing everything all together, undergarments, etc. is that your padding actually is supposed to go underneath the corset instead of over. Now again, I forgot to do that. So this just fits my hips as is, and then I have to wear my padding over the corset below the petticoat. So that is one thing that is wrong with this corset, but otherwise it does fit me quite well. 
the padding in the bust is really what is supporting the bust here. That and the combo with the chemise or whatever sort of undergarment you are wearing. Uh, wearing a knit top here does not have the same effect, so it's not quite as good as something like in a plain cotton. But this is the overall shape. It's a pretty dramatic waist to hip to bust. And I'm really curious to see what that equates to in measurements. So let's go ahead and take those measurements. Waist here is 37 and an eighth inch. So I think that is the smallest that it's gotten so far, but only by an eighth of an inch. I believe it makes it an eighth of an inch smaller than my 1860s corset. The rib cage here is where that padding is sitting. So this should be much larger than my normal rib cage measurement. Okay, I don't think this is a very accurate rib cage measurement. It did wind up coming out to 46 inches, but it ref was refusing to stay in place in the back. So I was kind of having to hold it up with my arms and I think that that skewed things. So I don't know that it's quite 46 and a half, but there's no better way for me to take a better one without the help of someone and no one else is home. Now let's get the bust and hopefully it will stay in place for that measurement. The bust in this one is kind of outside of the corset. It's right at the top of the corset in the back, but in the front, it's actually just above the top. So it's really kind of a funky bust measurement. So we're looking at a 50 inch bust. Um, I think I'm a little bit high in the back, so that might be skewing it up a tiny bit, but yeah, like a 49 and a half inch, 50 inch bust somewhere in there. And that's mostly because the bulk of the corset that's being added to the back, since this is a higher backed corset, and then not having anything added in the front. And finally, the hip measurement. Again, normally this hip measurement would be significantly larger than my actual hip measurement, but because I did not add the extra room, this is actually a little too hugging. And so I would expect this to maybe even be smaller than my natural hip measurement. Oh my God, this is still coarse and I cannot get the tape to stay. So I was wrong, it's actually not smaller, it's 55 inches, so it's a lot larger. So I guess things are still being pushed around, and so even without the padding, having that big of an increase is really quite surprising. Last up we have my 19 teens corset made in 2012 and this is made out of cotton ticking for the exterior and cotton canvas for the interior though this is a little bit lighter weight of a canvas than my other corsets. The busk wasn't quite long enough for what I would have wanted but it did okay however I did have to reinforce the bottom of the busk so that it wouldn't poke through and it closes with a hook below the bottom of the busk to ease that stress point. This corset is made from a tutorial on Jen Thompson's blog and went together very nicely. It's a very simple, simple corset and the bones in this one are encased within the two layers and the panels are quite straight as well. No gussets here. This one also has machine bound eyelets because I didn't have any grommets at the time, but if I did this again, that is something I would change because that has been one of the weak points and you'll notice that some of my eyelets are actually tearing out. But let's take a look at this final corset on the body. And the final corset from the 19 teens. 
For this corset, I have actually gone ahead and put my modern bra back on because I always wear my modern bra with this corset because there is no bust support. This stops fully below the bust. So if you've seen my 19 teens getting dressed videos, which I will link below, I do wear a modern bra and camisole with this corset when I wear it. This is another corset that is very comfortable. It really doesn't do much for your figure like at all. It kind of just smooths things, which is what you want in that columnar look of the 19 teens. So let's go ahead and take some measurements. I don't expect that these measurements will be that different from my actual measurements other than probably the rib cage. Starting with the waist, We're actually at 41 and an eighth. So this is the only corset that I've put on that has increased my waist measurement. There is no waist reduction in this at all. With the rib cage, I expect this to be a little bit smaller. And I'm again having a lot of difficulty getting it to stay in place in the back. So approximate rib cage measurement is 43 and a half, which is actually almost identical to my actual rib cage measurement. Bust measurement should probably just be my regular bust measurement. Though actually, come to think of it, it will probably be a little bit larger because the corset does go up so high in the back that it adds bulk. But it is 49 even, so it's not that much larger. And hip measurement is 52 and a half inches. So very close to my actual hip measurement when I'm not wearing a corset. So let's talk about some takeaways from this experiment. I found it really quite interesting. I made a note of all of my measurements as I went, so I am going to be referring to these just as some comparison's sake. But I really didn't ever see a humongous change in any measurement with a corset. Now, again, I wasn't tight lacing any of these. I mean, this one you can, literally can't tight lace, but even with like the 1860s corset, I was not tight lacing that. So that would be an interesting experiment to just see how much of a change might happen if I were to tight lace. But since most women did not tight lace, that's not even, let's not even go there. That's a whole can of worms to open. And I don't wanna do that in this video. So let's look at each measurement individually and just see kind of the changes, what was the biggest, what was the smallest of each measurement category. So starting with the bust, my regular, just wearing a bra bust size is 48 and an eighth inches. With all of the various corset sizes, though I probably shouldn't include that really terrible pair of 1780s stays, but even with that one, the swing of sizes goes from 43 and 5 eighths to 49 and a half. So that's pretty big, that's a six inch swing. Taking out the very ill-fitting corset, we're going from a swing of 45 and 3 eighths to 49, so we're still looking at three and a half inches difference between the largest to the smallest. Not huge, but definitely that's a bit of a change that probably someone who is not plus size would not really be able to achieve. So rib cage next. The rib cage had the, I think, smallest difference between everything. My natural rib cage is 43 and a quarter. And again, that is the part that, of me that I like the least. Um, and the swing in rib cage sizes went from, I have to eat my words. Actually, that swung quite a bit. The swing in rib cage sizes went from 40 in the 1860s to 46 in the 1900s. So of course that was with padding and possibly a measurement that did not work since the measuring tape kept slipping. Looking at waist, I feel like waist is what people think of the most when you think of corsets of changing waist sizes or specifically cinching your waist into nothing, which of course, if you've worn corsets at all, you know that that is not true. <laughs> so waist measurements 
really didn't change very much. We're going from 37 and 1 8 inches in the 1900s to the maximum of 41 and an 8 inches in this corset here. So that's only a difference of 4 inches and my natural waist was sitting right in the middle of all of those at 39.75 inches. So really we're not getting much of a change at all. Most of the time I was reducing by about an inch or less. Finally, looking at hips, this is actually where we saw the smallest change in sizes, which kind of surprised me. I thought that I would get a lot more of increase of hip measurements because of things being pushed down and kind of like moved into a different spot, but it wasn't so. So my natural hip measurement is 42 and a quarter inches and the range of everything, that was the smallest. So it did get a little bit of, you know, adding to the hips just from moving some flesh around at all. And the top of that range was 55 inches in the S Bench 1900s corset, which does make sense because that one is really defining the hips, even without padding. And that's about it. I think that was a fascinating experiment. So hopefully it was interesting to you as well. And if there was something that you thought was surprising, please let me know down in the comments. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs on Tuesdays and regular content like this coming out on Saturdays. But I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. It's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. I also have a link to my Ko-fi account down below if you would like to support me and this channel further. Once again, thank you so, so much for joining me for this video. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!